What would you do if you were riding a 40-year-old motorcycle in the middle of Manhattan and your clutch just overheated? For unknown reasons, you're dressed up as a spaceman and pulling over is not an option. My 1984 CB700S's clutch overheated on the on-ramp into the Lincoln Tunnel. Now, for anyone who's been to Manhattan knows, there's nowhere to pull over going into the Lincoln Tunnel. So my options were A, go through the Lincoln Tunnel during rush hour traffic without stopping, or B, sit on the side of the road and hope I wasn't run over. Mama ain't raised no bitch, so of course I booked it through that tunnel. Keep in mind, rush hour traffic through the Lincoln Tunnel can take over an hour. So when I tell you I lane split through the entire tunnel and crossed it in five minutes, you gotta believe me, it was the sketchiest thing I've ever done. The Lincoln Tunnel doesn't have a shoulder, so you're right in between two cars the whole way. Now, New York City drivers do not like lane splitting bikes. So much so, you can count on them trying to block you, hit you, or in whatever way, prevent you from passing. So this is me, driving through the Lincoln Tunnel, living on hopes, dreams, and a whole lot of nothing else. I did finally make it out of the tunnel and got out before the poor authority or anyone else could get to me. The rest of the ride cooled the clutch off, and I never had a problem with it again. Anyway, good times. All right, now to make this an education video. Bridges are cool and all, but you don't know what a real man's solution to crossing water is? An underwater tunnel. Why go over when you can go under? So you all know how water pressure works, right? The deeper you go in water, the more pressure increases. At 10 meters, you're at 14.7 PSI. At 100 meters, it's 43 PSI. At 3,800 meters, it's about 5,500 PSI, or enough to crush carbon fiber. Now let's look at the Lincoln Tunnel in New York City. At about 30 meters deep, there's about 14.7 PSI, or four atmospheres. So to prevent collapse, you could just pressurize the tunnel, right? Well, that's what they did during construction. The tunnel was sealed and set to a pressure of around three atmospheres. After construction, pressure was returned to atmospheric. So to prevent collapse, it used circular, steel, and concrete tubes. In my bridges short, I mentioned triangles were one of the strongest shapes for construction under loads, but cylinders are best for handling high pressures. What you may not know is most tunnels are full cylinders, just part of the bottom is built in to allow for vehicle use, giving the illusion of a semicircle shape. Most deep underwater tunnels are like the same way. In the Lincoln Tunnel, it's a full cylinder. Its shell is made of lots of layers. Think of it like it needing to be a lot of things, so they use a lot of things. The innermost layer is the road, reinforced concrete on a steel frame tied to the tunnel's structural ribs. Next is the sidewalls and ceiling. These are curved walls that you'd see from the road. They're usually covered in tiles, there to prevent steel corrosion and provide fire resistance. Next, you get the structural layer. You can have thousands of cast iron rings, each about three inches thick. Each ring interlocks with the next, with a rubber gasket in between, forming a long, watertight cylinder. There's one more layer, the grout and concrete ring. Once a section of rings was completed, there's a small gap between the earth and the ring. Concrete was then filled into that gap, preventing ground movement and creating uneven pressure points. Once you fill in the gap, you move forward to the next segment until you reach the end of the water and the other side of the land. All right, thanks for watching. Like if you liked, subscribe for more.